All right, we are continuing in section 10.2. We're still in 10.2. We were working on example three when I stopped the last video. Um, it was negative x minus two squared over nine plus y plus three squared. We turned it around, we got y plus three squared minus x minus two squared over nine. All right, it was one. The center would be at x minus h, so h is a two. y minus k, y is a negative three. k is a negative three, rather. So the center is at negative, two negative three. Um, the y term is always over a squared, so a must have been a 1 since there's nothing here. The a squared must have been 1, so hence a is 1. x minus k squared over b squared, so the b must be a 3 since b squared is 9. So I can use a and b to find c. c turns out to be the square root of 10. So the false side just start from my center, and I'll add and subtract that value of c to my y coordinate to find the false side. So my center was 2, negative 3. So it's 2, negative 3 plus square root of 10 because that's c and 2, negative 3 minus square root of 10. Again, you're going to add and subtract c to your y coordinate. Same kind of thing works for my vertices. I'm going to take my center, and since uh, a was 1, right? Yeah, a was 1, okay? So my vertices are a units above and below the center. So 2, negative 3 plus 1, 2, negative 3 minus 1. I'm going to add and subtract 1 to my y coordinate. So my vertices become 2, negative 2, 2, negative 4. All right, so plot your center. Go over 2, down, negative 3. That's right here. A is 1. So I go up 1 and down 1. Okay? B is um, 3. I'm trying to draw my box. So I start at my center. I go 3 units. 1, 2, 3. It's right here. I go three units in this direction. One, two, three is right here. So my box is there. There's my box. My box is a two by six box. Six units wide. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's just twice the value of B, right? and two units high. That's twice the value of eight, okay? Now, I knew that I had a um, vertical, vertical transverse axis because I had y squared over, or y squared minus x squared. That means my transverse axis is vertical. So these are my vertices, right here and right here. Now I still need my asymptotes, but again, all you ever have to do is use the corners of your box now we'll draw your asymptotes. This corner and this corner, draw your dotted line through that. That'll give you your asymptotes. You can go ahead and do the equation if you want. It would be negative a over b and positive a over bx, right? But again, the asymptotes will always work the same way. So start at your vertices. Use your asymptotes to define the curvature. Start at your vertice. So there's one half of my hyperbola. For the lower half, start at the vertice, and I'll use the, the, the lower um, asymptotes. There would be the graph of my hyperbola. So nothing hard about this. Okay? So that's example three. Okay? Example four. All right. Example four. They say right equation of the hyperbola in standard form. And they give me an hyperbola 11x squared. They say minus 2y squared okay, plus 66x. Minus 4y, okay, plus 75 equals 0. So there's my hyperbola, okay? I know it's a hyperbola because the highest degree terms are both degree 2, okay? That's what tells me it's a hyperbola. And I've got subtraction between a square term and a square term, so x squared minus y squared. The moment I see that the highest degree terms are both 2, and I see subtraction between the two terms, that means it has to be a hyperbola. 
those lower order terms won't change that. Okay. Well, I've got to put it in standard form, so I've got to complete the square. So I'm going to take the 11x squared plus 66x. I'm going to group those two. Then I'm going to take the negative 2y squared uh, minus 4y. I'm going to group those two. And the 75, I'm going to subtract 75 on both sides, and I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to complete the square. Well, first I've got to factor out the 11, though. So x squared plus 6x. I'm going to leave some room because I'm going to complete the square. And I'm going to pull out a negative 2 here. And I'll have y squared plus 2y. Leave some room. Negative 75. All right, so again, the reason I pulled out the 11 was you've got to have, I'm going to complete the square on what's left in parentheses. When you complete the square, the square term has to have a 1 in front. So I've got a 1 in front of x squared. I look at the x to the first term. The coefficient is positive 6. Half of 6 is 3, but you got a square. That's what you need to add to make a perfect square. Positive 3 squared is a positive 9. This thing is now a perfect square trinomial. Same principle here. Look at half of a positive 2. That's positive 1. Positive 1 squared is a positive 1. That makes that a perfect square. Now, I've got to keep my equation balanced. Okay? I added 9, but there's an 11 here. 11 times 9 is what, 99? So since I added 99 over there, I've got to add 99 there. Also, I added 1, but really there's a negative 2 here. Negative 2 times the positive 1 is a negative 2. So since I subtract the 2 here, I've got to subtract 2 there. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do to both sides to keep it balanced. Okay? Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you do the exact same thing to the other to keep it balanced. So again, this is now a perfect square trinomial. There's got to be an x there. The factoring comes for free. Half of a positive 6 was a positive 3. You can check it, but that factored, but this factors in x plus 3 squared. Minus 2. I claim that this is a perfect square trinomial. That's got to be a y. Half of positive 2 is positive 1. The factoring comes for free. And on the other side, I just add like terms. All of these are numbers. Take your calculator. Take negative 75 plus 99. That's a positive 24. 24 minus 2 is 22. Okay? Well, we're closer. We're looking for standard form. The standard form of a hyperbola, if you look at that chart I showed you, both of those equations always have the equation equal 1. So until your equation equals 1, it's not in standard form. So if you get a 1 here, i got to divide by 22. But if I do it there, i got to do it everywhere. Divide by 22 there, divide by 22 there. Once you do that, 11 over 22 is x plus 3 squared over 2 minus. I've got a 2 over 22 here. That leaves 11 in the bottom. And I had y plus 1 squared equals 1. There's the standard form of my hyperbola. There's the standard form of my hyperbola. So that's what we'll have to do to find standard form. Sometimes we'll have to complete the square to get that done. Okay? Example 5. Example 5. Example 5 says determine the standard form. Determine the standard form. Okay? Of an equation of hyperbola. So of an hyperbola. They say with vertices vertices are negative 4, 0 and 8, 0. And they say we have foci, foci at negative 8, 0. And they say 12, 0. So I want to determine the equation. That's all they give me. I want to determine the equation of a hyperbola that has um, the standard form of the equation hyperbola. Uh, with vertices negative 4, 0, and 8, 0, excuse me, 
and foci are negative 8, 0, and 12, 0. Okay. Well, let's see if we can take a look at this. So I suggest you plot these points. I think that gives us pretty good insight into how to get this equation. Okay. X, Y. So the X's go from negative 8 to 8. Thank you. 